Okay, so the, here is uh, the last lesson for 4.3, for lesson uh, 3 in the fourth chapter. Uh, again, we're going to be doing all these questions without uh, a calculator. So uh, just a reminder that part of your test will be without a calculator, and these will be those types of... Uh, Oh, actually, I'm wrong. There will be some calculator questions in here. I'm just looking at this. So you can use a calculator. Oop, yes, check. All right, um, but before we get started, I'm just going to remind you of some of the stuff that you took in grade 11 about uh, reference angles and even hearing me talking a little bit about reference angles. So if I take my unit circle and I divide it up, um, we've, we've, I'm um, hopefully we have memorized the, uh, the exact values for those points over there. The first quadrant here is where our reference angle is going to be. So whenever we're given uh, an angle, so here's an angle, uh, and I can think of that as part of a family of angles that make uh, a bow tie, where this angle and this angle and that angle drawn off the x-axis are the same. So this could be considered sort of a family of of angles and whatever the value is here so I'm just going to make up an x value and a y value uh, they have to be uh, between 0 and 1 uh, if they're in the first quadrant it's going to be positive so maybe I'll say uh, I don't know, uh, 1 quarter and um, 15 over 16 or you know something like that so we've got two values here they're both positive uh, you can solve for the first quadrant of for the reference angle and then the other values here you can think about when is x going to be positive and when is x going to be negative so in the in quadrant number one they're both positive in quadrant number two your x value is negative and your y value is positive in quadrant number three your x value is negative and your y value is negative. And in quadrant number four, your x is positive and your y is negative. And just the other reminder for tan and for cotan, they're positive in the first and the third quadrant and they're negative in the second and the fourth. So uh, hopefully that will help things out a little bit. Let's take a look at our first one here. Uh, the sine of theta is equal to 0 0.879 between uh, 0 and 2 pi radians. So one thing is if the uh, question is given in radians, okay, if, uh, if the interval or the range uh, is given in radians, then we should answer in radians. So this one's radians, the second one we're going to answer in degrees, and then we're going to answer in radians, and we're going to go back to degrees again. Okay, if sine of theta is equal to 0 0.879, I think it's useful to try to visualize this. So that was a remarkably good circle. So let's try to visualize this. Remember that the sine is our y value, um, if I bring out a different color. So a y value the the largest that y can be is equal to positive 1 so i'll bring it down a little bit so if let's say that's about where 0 0.879 is so here is a possibility for a point that's on the unit circle and that has a y value of 0 0.879 but there is another one the other one would be over here so really we're going to be looking for two answers okay so um for all these questions for every uh interval of 2 pi, you're going to get two sine answers, you're going to get two cos answers, okay? And the reciprocals uh, secant and cosecant as well. So uh, anticipate two answers. I'll put that in. Two answers. Um, now if you plug in, uh, oh yeah, the other thing is, this will be your reference angle because it is in the first quadrant, like I was just talking about. And so our it, we, if we compete, com, if we compute the reference angle first, and then we can use that reference angle to figure out um, the angles in the other quadrants. So, if the the sine of our reference angle is equal to 0 0.879, then we get our calculator out, and theta r is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.879. And here you're going to use your calculator out. And I don't have my calculator with me right now, but I think that my answer was uh, 1.0738. 
and typically you want uh, four decimal places here. So there's my first one. And now, uh, how do you, if you've got this angle, how do you calculate for your other quadrants? So for if if quadrant number one, you have a reference angle, quadrant number one. In quadrant number two, so let's say that was your reference angle over there. In quadrant number two, it is in degrees, 180 degrees minus your reference angle. In radians, it's pi minus my reference angle. So this one is in quadrant number two. So my second answer is going to be equal to pi minus uh, our answer here. So 1.0738. And that answer works out to 2.0678 when you get your calculator out. So there are my two answers. I'll just complete this here. If you're in the third quadrant, so this would be the angle. So if this was your reference angle, now it would be pi plus, or I'll do it in degrees first, 180 degrees plus the reference angle, or in radians, it would be pi plus theta r. And last, if you're in the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant there, it would be um, 360 degrees minus my reference angle or 2 pi minus my reference angle. So you can think of that uh, for your four quadrants. Okay, looking at my second question, uh, the cos of theta is equal to negative 0 0.366. Let's draw another circle and think about what this will might look like. Seem to do good on the circles, but then this line gets all curved. In, in any case, uh, I'll switch to green so I can write on that, all right? And if x is cos, and this is my x in the negative direction, this would be a full negative 1. This would be negative 5. So this would be somewhere around uh, negative 0 0.366. And so, I, again, I've got two answers here and here. So I'll draw one there and one there. Okay, so I've got two. I'm going to anticipate two answers. And my reference angle is over here in the first quadrant, where this angle is equal to that angle, which is equal to that angle. There's my reference angle. So I'm going to say in the first quadrant, uh, my answer would always be positive. So I'm going to say the cos of my reference angle is equal to positive 0 0.366. So my reference angle is going to be equal to the inverse cos of 0 0.366. So that's going to be equal to 68.53 degrees. Does that make sense? That looks like about, could be about 68 degrees. My, my angle, you know, not perfectly to scale. Now I have to figure out now between zero, in, in this range between zero and 360 degrees, what could be my answer be? Well, in quadrant number three, uh, it'll be 180 degrees plus 68.53. So that will give me what 111.47, I think. Does that make sense? Hmm, 0.366. Oh, you know what? I totally made a mistake. Good that I made a mistake with you guys around. I'm thinking about the y qua quadrant, aren't I? So let's change this. I'm going to get my, my red pen out here and say, no, no, this was definitely a mistake here. If if x is negative, then my and uh, x was negative. I'm, I'm thinking about y here. x should be negative over here, uh, negative 3.6. So it would be this spot and this spot, wouldn't it? So this would be my two spots. So I want quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Okay, and my reference angle would also look a little steeper too, wouldn't it? So this is still right, but I don't want to do uh, quadrant 3 and 4. I want to do quadrant 3 and quadrant number 2. So this is correct for... Um, this angle here, Ooh, no, it, no, let me see here, that's for this angle here, 111, and for this one here, it'll be 180 degrees minus 68.53. So I'll leave my error here. Here I was thinking, I got confused, uh, cos I even said was x, but then I was 
thinking y when I mark this down here. That would be y is equal to negative 0 0.366. It should be y is equal to negative 6.366. And these are my two answers. So quadrant 2 and quadrant number 3. In quadrant number 2 over here, it's going to be 180 minus whatever my answer was. Uh, now what does that work out to? Uh, let's see. 180 minus. So this is my 111.47. And this one was... 248.53 degrees. That's where. Okay. So answer number one and answer number two. There we go. Okay. I hope you forgive me for that huge error. Uh, I'll show my error though just to show, yes, I'm very human and these things happen. Okay. Now we're back to radians. Okay. Back to radians. And we're thinking about now my x value is equal to, or my y value is equal to negative one half. Even though I'm using x instead of theta, it's still sine, so I'm thinking about my y value. Okay, so my y value is negative a half, it's about over there. And so if it's, I'm gonna be looking at this angle and this angle, um, and I want a similar reference angle. So here, over here, this is my reference angle. So the sine of my reference angle is equal to one half. And I don't think I need my uh, calculator out for this one. So for one half, sine theta is going to be equal to root three over, or sorry, is equal to pi over six. Okay, so if you're remembering the, if you use your left hand there, that would be holding it out. It would be your ring finger is, is tucked in. Uh, that's pi over 6 because below the knuckles there's one finger. The square root of 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. So uh, hopefully you're doing okay with that. It's, it's like we were doing before with exact values. It's just going in the reverse direction. If, if your answer is half, what angle is it? Pi over 6. Uh, so I want to find out for quadrant number 3 and quadrant number 4. So my quadrant three answer is going to be equal to uh, pi plus pi over six, which would be equal to seven pi over six. My quadrant four answer here is two pi minus pi over six. So two pi is 12 sixths minus one is 11 pi over six. All right, we have two left to go. Oh, wait a minute. We got three left to go. Hopefully I can get this done before the bell. I think I might have to pause it. Uh, here we're working with degrees again, not for not with radians. And the, uh, the cos, that means the x value, is going to be equal to negative 1. So I'm going to say here, if the x value is negative 1, we're looking at that spot right there. There's only one solution now instead of two solutions because it's exactly at negative one. Uh, at negative one and at zero, cos will only have one answer and sine uh, will only have one answer and at positive one and at negative one. So um, did I say that right? Cos only has one answer here and here at negative one and positive one. Okay, so what is the x and the y value here? x is negative one and y is zero, right? Uh, if we're talking about degrees, this is 180 degrees. So x is equal to 180 degrees. And is it fit within this range between zero and 360? Yeah, so that would be it, okay? Um, now look what's happening in E. In E, we're getting a little tricky with this uh, the interval. Now it's not between zero and 360, it's between negative 180 and, and positive 180. So let's just see what's going on here, okay? So, you know what, uh, oh, I, th I think I'm going to pause and then come back.